Uh, so, uh, today I will tell you about the PNN method and solution of uh, different inverse problems of complex heat transfer. Uh, I would like to tell you about uh, box. Uh, uh, we accounted uh, for when we were prepared for this work. Uh, this is... Uh, Papers by Chipotarev, Alexander Yurovich, Kaftanyuk, Andrei Gorovich, and Grenkin, Gleb Vladimirovich. Most of them. Uh, and today I will tell you about PNN method, which uh, involves machine learning. This is not my work uh, that involves machine learning in solution in this progress of complex heat transfer. Uh, in 2022, I prepared material uh, the solution of two inverse problems using uh, classic deep learning methods. Uh, we have solved uh, numerical uh, numerous uh, numerical experiments in uh, free frame plus plus unit using finite elements methods. Uh, uh, formed a data set about ten thousand cases with different parameters of boundary coefficients or uh, medium uh, parameters, such as density, specific heat capacity, etc. Then we trained neural network to predict uh, quality functional. Uh, after training, we used simulated annealing method to uh, optimize neural network prediction function to obtain uh, optimal boundary coefficients. Uh, one uh, work was published uh, in 2023, and the second work uh, been reviewed for two years, but I believe, at least I want to believe, that it will be published this year. Uh, so, uh, my work today involves different methods uh, than classic machine learning. It is a physics-informed neural networks method. Uh, it is an algorithm for solving partial differential equations, Use a neural network uh, by approximating unknown functions. Uh, the algorithm was proposed uh, in 2017, uh, but the work was published only in 2019. And uh, it should be mentioned that uh, uh, despite that work was published in 2019, it has around 10,000 citations right now. So the algorithm has become quite popular in, in the last years. Uh, and we have implemented it to solve some other different uh, inverse problems. So the method is to uh, minimize some quality functional, which includes quadratic terms for the residuals of the equations, uh, boundary conditions, and initial conditions. Uh, so we in case of inverse problems, we uh, add some additional information uh, and then minimize. Uh, so we use the following approximation, uh, the following typical neural network architecture. Uh, the one can, could, can ask uh, why exactly that type of neural network? Why don't we use some other architecture? You can use any architecture. The result uh, may be a little bit different, but if you uh, obtain some uh, uh, accuracy when you're solving the problem, uh, the, by accuracy, I mean uh, low uh, value of quality functional. So you can say that you solve this problem. This is an approximation, so you can uh, obtain infinity number of approximations using infinity number of uh, different uh, neural network architecture. Uh, so we stopped at this architecture because we believe it is the most efficient. Uh, so the approximation in general uh, can reduce to one highly um, Nonlinear, uh, infinitely differentiable function of some input parameters. In our case, we approximate 
For example, temperature, it is a function of spatial temporal parameters, x, y, t. Uh, so we define approximation, uh, then we uh, put our approximation in the our equations. We generate a data set, and in each uh, point of this data set, we calculate uh, the value of the residual of equations or uh, as boundary conditions that we know. The difference between the boundary conditions and uh, approximation. Uh, by minimizing all these terms, we can solve uh, the problem. This is uh, typically the data set of such problems. Uh, so, uh, as, as for complex heat transfer, we tried to solve uh, a problem that is close to a real uh, application problem. Uh, you can see N5 furnace at the screen. Uh, it uh, consists of uh, different uh, subdomains. Uh, one of them is smelter. Uh, you can see that uh, raw material heated to some temperature flow through the inflow boundary uh, that is denoted by a green line. Uh, it flows toward outlet direction and uh, we have also wall boundary. Uh, and at the melter, uh, because it called and fired furnace, the fires, which are sources, are in the end of the smelter. Uh, and also we try to solve uh, another problem in a uh, subdomain called uh, throat. Uh, Excuse me, what is, is, what is melter in Russian and throat in Russian? What? <clears throat> uh, melter, no, это значит, грубо говоря, печка, а вот, а throat это, ну, перешейк, я бы назвал так, то есть я не нашел точного прям перевода. В основном опирался на англоязычную литературу. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, um, we have no uh, sources in the throat and uh, uh, heated up uh, liquid uh, melted glass flows through the green boundary and outflows toward the uh, red boundary here. Uh, so, uh, we consider the following mathematical model uh, consisting of uh, system of equations. Uh, here we have heat equation and um, uh, steady P1 approximation of radiative uh, transfer equation. We consider the model in limited region, two-dimensional, and uh, the most important uh, parts here the most important functions are theta, that is the normalized temperature, pi, that is the normalized radiation intensity, and q, uh, that is the source terms. Uh, the system written in dimensionless constants, so we have uh, some uh, uh, dimensionless numbers, such as Struchel numbers, Fourier number, uh, Nussel number for radiative transfer, the clan number, similarity coefficients, etc. Uh, so, in this work, we consider different uh, boundary conditions, uh, boundary and initial conditions. In one of the problem, we will consider initial condition. In one, uh, in another problem, we will consider final condition. Uh, and in both problems, we consider Dirichlet condition on the inlet for temperature. Uh, Newman condition for outlet for temperature and Robin type condition for uh, temperature on the wall and uh, Robin time condition for radiation intensity at the wall uh, on the inlet and on the outlet boundaries. Uh, it should be noted that here in the Robin condition uh, for temperature and radiation intensity we have uh, boundary coefficients H and gamma. Uh, in one of the problems, we will uh, control them. Uh, so they will be unknown. We will have to find them. Uh, so, but we will return to the first problem with sources. Uh, we know boundary coefficients. We don't need to find them. We need to find the sources. Uh, 
uh, as you can see uh, at first uh, we tried to find uh, the sources intensity and now in the location uh, as it uh, as it is uh, uh, people come and do but uh, we couldn't uh, solve the problem in this way i will explain later why and so we finding uh, sources and their location. So Q is the function of uh, X, Y, T. Uh, the following boundary and initial conditions uh, take place. Uh, and as an additional information, because we're solving an inverse problem to find uh, the sources, we take uh, the following uh, uh, functional. Uh, blue dots are observation points. Uh, let's say we have uh, sensors in these points. It is a two-dimensional problem, but uh, if we consider three dimensions, it is maybe sensors on the bottom on the melter uh, or at the top of the melter. Uh, but here we can uh, con um, consider them to be inside the body. Uh, and uh, let's say we know temperature here. So we need uh, such sources that uh, uh, make our temperature in these points equal given a function theta d. Excuse me, what, what does it mean? Inverse problem. It is inverse to which uh, forward problem? What is inverse problem? What does uh, it mean? Inverse problem to find sheet uh, phi and q. And forward problem? Forward problem, we know q, uh, we need to find only sheet and phi. Oh, please, once again, forward problem is what is known, what is unknown? Uh, we know right hand side in forward problem. In inverse problem, we don't know right hand side q, but we know uh, temperature at uh, blue dots. Mm. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we implement uh, PNN method to solve this problem numerically uh, by constructing following functional. Uh, so it consists of uh, different uh, terms. The first term, R uh, subscript res, is uh, a mean value of uh, residuals of equations. Residual of equations is a, a difference between uh, left hand side and right hand side. Uh, we uh, substitute our approximations of uh, neural network uh, into our equations. Then we substitute uh, our points from uh, that set, uh, uh, square it, and uh, sum. Uh, the R theta DC uh, term is uh, to satisfy uh, directly condition on the inlet boundary. The R and C theta uh, is term to satisfy Newman condition for theta on the outlet boundary. And R RC theta is the term to satisfy Robin uh, boundary conditions at the wall boundary. Uh, and uh, RAC is to satisfy initial conditions for theta. Uh, so here are parameters uh, for our um, uh, numeric experiment. I can say that uh, the... so. Uh, we have the following parameters. X is 10 meters, Y is 6 meters. Uh, that is uh, the furnace uh, uh, is uh, very big. And we consider four hours of time, total time. And uh, relative, uh, num relative value of temperature is 2000 Kelvin. Uh, the following parameters also satisfy melted glass, uh, and we also consider a uh, convective term that is we have a flow. Uh, we have a flow with the following uh, reference values of uh, speed in the along uh, x uh, axis and uh, y axis. Uh, 
Uh, so we have uh, free number uh, and Struchel number. And you, as you can see, the, tru the Struchel number is uh, relatively big, uh, free number relatively uh, small. So uh, the convection will, the convection term in our equation of heat transfer will uh, dominate. So initial temperature uh, 0.5, uh, temperature in the outlet and at the wall 0.5, and we want in our observation points temperature to be 0 0.75. That is, uh, we want to heat uh, glass inside the melter uh, by uh, 50, uh, 500 degrees Kelvin. Uh, here you can see velocity field that was obtained by solution of Navier-Stokes equation in uh, free FM using finite, finite element method. Uh, and we obtain the following results. So you can see that uh, at the beginning of the process, temperature uh, jump to the desired uh, uh, temperature uh, from 0 0.5 to 0 0.75. Uh, and uh, what about sources? Uh, they uh, there are some inconvenience in the beginning of the process, some jump also, but then it stabilizes uh, at uh, uh, at one place. So we found uh, location of uh, optimal location of source, uh, and the uh, jump of uh, source intensity at the beginning uh, uh, was due to uh, necessity to heat up whole uh, melter. So uh, we couldn't uh, initially solve the problem knowing uh, location of the sources because uh, probably there was no solution. Uh, due to uh, dominating uh, convective term. So uh, near the inlet, we can put one uh, heater that can uh, heat uh, melted glass. And then temperature will uh, stabilize in whole region uh, due to convection. <clears throat> Uh, so uh, the other problem is inverse boundary coefficient problem. We don't have uh, right hand side. We don't have uh, sources here, uh, but we uh, want to uh, find uh, unknown functions, which are temperature, theta, pi, radiation intensity, and uh, boundary coefficients. Uh, boundary coefficients at the wall. As you can see, there are... Uh, some different subdomains at the wall uh, where we want to find uh, our coefficients. Uh, the coefficients take place in Robin uh, condition uh, for both temperature and radiation intensity. So instead of finding several different uh, coefficients for each uh, uh, subdomain on the wall, uh, we uh, find a function of x, y that is uh, actual only for the wall sides. Uh, and moreover, uh, it is a very hard problem because uh, we need to find uh, a correct initial condition. But for initial condition, we can uh, solve a steady state problem find initial condition, but we need to know boundary coefficients for steady state problem. But uh, if we know boundary coefficients, we don't need to find them in unsteady problem. Uh, so uh, we don't know initial conditions and we don't know uh, boundary coefficients at the uh, initial uh, state. So we solve retrospective uh, problem. Let's say uh, we know the temperature at uh, the final moment of time uh, will be equal to theta t. Uh, and then uh, we need to find uh, four announce with all this information. That is, we have one final condition 
we have boundary conditions, but we don't have uh, any additional information. So the problem uh, here is uh, retrospective uh, ill post because we lack of data and inverse. Uh, so we constructed also a functional consisted, uh, consisting of uh, residuals of equations, consisting of uh, Dirichlet conditions, Neyman conditions, uh, Robin conditions, uh, and final condition for our unknown functions. It is similar to the slide I showed you in the previous problem. It is all similar. Uh, so, but uh, it is uh, the functional that show us the uh, uh, possibility to solve the function, the problem. Uh, when we minimize this uh, functional uh, and it is, uh, for example, equals uh, uh, to very small number, to, then we say uh, that we solve this problem. Uh, in, all, in all our cases, we have reached the number, the value of this functional to uh, 10, uh, to 10 power uh, minus four, this means third. Uh, so we want to solve this problem. We uh, set the following parameters, uh, one hour of time, total time, uh, and the following uh, values. The structural numbers are even bigger, so uh, uh, here we solve problem two times. One with uh, convective terms, and second time without convective terms to see uh, what happens. And we are finding our boundary coefficients in uh, uh, the following uh, boundaries. Uh, we have minimal value and maximum value. Uh, so in first case, when we doesn't have convective term, uh, we obtain the solution of temperature and radiation intensity. Uh, temperature at the inlet um, on the left is uh, slowly decreasing to the uh, final uh, value that we know. And uh, in the end, uh, temperature in the whole domain reaches uh, given theta t. And we have obtained uh, uh, two functions, functions. H that is satisfy boundary conditions for theta and gamma, which satisfy boundary conditions for Pi. Um, as you can see, uh, so we don't need uh, uh, again to predict uh, or reconstruct uh, H on each boundary. We just uh, obtained a function of X, Y that is uh, uh, actual only for boundaries. We can see where uh, H uh, can uh, be related as a thickness of wall. We can see where uh, the wall should be thicker, uh, where it should be thinner. Uh, y is uh, referred to uh, emissivity of the boundary, so we know what color do we need to paint it in. And the second experiment, uh, when there is a flow, uh, there is some small turbulence at the uh, top because uh, the gravity uh, uh, takes place. Uh, so with uh, the uh, convection terms, uh, we have uh, obtained the result and uh, it is slightly different uh, for our case due to convection term. And we obtained also gamma and H, and it is slightly different. Uh, here is comparison. Uh, left to the left is uh, the solution uh, with convective term, 
for gamma to the right, the solution of, uh, of the, in this problem without convective theorem. Uh, so we, we can see that on the left, uh, our boundary should be painted in black color, and to the right, uh, it should be painted to the uh, white color. So if uh, in our channel doesn't take a flow, we don't need to paint it in black, for example. That is the explanation of the results. And uh, here, comparison for H coefficient. Uh, for example, if we uh, want uh, optimal boundary coefficient, if here uh, take a place a flow, we need to uh, make this uh, walls uh, thinner than when uh, it doesn't take uh, when there is no uh, flow. Uh, so uh, uh, the PNN method has shown great potential in solving inverse and ill problems of complex heat transfer uh, compared to the other um, methods and the main advantage um, in boundary coefficient problem is possibility to predict uh, multiple boundary coefficients uh, uh, when uh, complex geometry take a place uh, and uh, it should be noted that uh, the um, existed uh, methods that was implemented by Alexander Yurchi Batarev, Andrei Gorich Kvtanyuk, Gleb Lynch Grenkin. They also take a place and uh, they are of great use when uh, the domain geometry is symmetric. They are of great use. But uh, when uh, we have uh, non symmetrical domain, the PNN method will be much more effective. And uh, as for computational overextensivity, that is always um, um, a question. Uh, for example, one numerical experiment what was uh, calculated, cal excuse me, calculated, uh, was uh, uh, calculated uh, on my own desktop for two hours. Uh, so we doesn't have a supercomputer like uh, Sobolev Institute does, but uh, we doesn't uh, we don't need it. No. And in the future plans, uh, we will, of course, do the study of theoretical aspects of demonstrated inverse problems, uh, if it's possible, prove solvability. Uh, the other uh, interesting. Uh, Mm, thing is to implement bang bang principle to predict piecewise boundary coefficients uh, and uh, uh, the next interesting step is to solve uh, a problem with nonlinear geometry and of course uh, not to forget what uh, uh, dear professors uh, do uh, to solve uh, the sources uh, intensity in this problem with additional integral of determination. Uh, thank you for your attention. Okay. Okay, thank you, Professor Kuznetsov, for your talk. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Please welcome. Yes, may I ask you a question? Uh, Yes, yes, of course. Please, Professor yeah. Kabanichin. Thank you, Kabanichin. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I agree with the last slide of your conclusions, uh, but I have a question about uh, justification of the neural uh, uh, physics-informed neural network. Do you have some theoretical background, uh, 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 say some uniqueness uh, theorem or any other theoretical background? of this uh, approach. Uh, there I, I, maybe, is... maybe I explain my question. If you use some other neural network, maybe you can uh, uh, obtain different results. 
uh, uh, how yes, do you see it? Yes. Thank you for the question. It is a very interesting question. Uh, yes, you are right. Uh, so there are uh, existence uh, theorems. Um, when uh, we talk about uh, linear problems, uh, for nonlinear problems, uh, it didn't prove it yet. Uh, so uh, when we use different uh, neural networks, uh, we can obtain different results. Uh -huh. uh, because we use approximation, uh, so if we change uh, neural network architecture, uh, we will obtain different approximation. How different it will be? It depends on many things. Mm -hmm. So it is very uh, interesting question. And unfortunately, uh, I cannot fully answer this uh, for now, but I believe uh, no one can. Uh Thank you, Merci. And Thank uh, could you please show the slide uh, 12 or 13? Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, does it mean that um, this uh, residual uh, can allow you to obtain coefficients? Uh, uh, or is it only in the sense of neural network? Uh, these residuals uh, for the equations allow us to satisfy uh, the equation. Uh, the following terms, uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, is it, uh, yes, uh, for the first equation, uh, error, error subscript one. It is a residual for the first equation, uh, heat transfer equation. We substitute uh, our unknown functions, which are theta, phi, and q, uh, with our neural network approximations. And uh, exactly uh, error uh, subscript one is allows us to uh, obtain uh, approximation for q. Uh, that is unknown sources. Yes, you are right. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Uh, may well, I ask a question? Yes, of course. Uh, the question is the following. When you use uh, your um, technique uh, with the help of uh, neur neural network, so on, so on, do you need to solve at any at any stage, at any step of reconstruction, do you need to solve corresponding forward problems or not? Uh, we solve in both forward and inverse problems at once. You you solve a series of forward problems, right? Uh, we solve uh, forward problem and uh, corresponding to the forward problem, uh, inverse problem. That is, uh, for example, for this problem, uh, we find uh, theta, fi, and q. No, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, you reconstruct your parameters also by some kind of iterations, and each step of iteration is realized by by your neural neural net. Is it correct? Uh, yes, it is correct. Uh, so each iteration is an epoch of learning of a neural network. So it yes, is learned but, by epochs. But it on is... each step, you have mm -hmm. to solve uh, a forward problem, right? Uh, no, no, no. 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 Uh, How does it work? I mean, I, I mean, at each step of iteration, uh, you. Uh, you change uh, the state of your neural uh, net, something like this. Uh, the neural network has... Uh, why is it possible to solve this problem using neural network? Neural network is a coefficients. Uh, we have a matrix of coefficients. Uh, uh, for example, you can see here, we have uh -huh, uh -huh, hidden uh -huh. layers, they are connected by these lines. Each line has its own weight. So we find uh, weights that um, 
uh, satisfy uh, our functional. Uh, so yes, at each uh, stage, at each iteration, they change and state of uh, neural network a change. Uh, so in that case, you are right. So the, 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 question, the question arises, uh, the same question as Sergei Igorich asked. Uh, I mean, if you, как по-английски, настройка. Settings. If you, say, if you set your, uh, your uh, neural net, you can uh, you need uh, to to change uh, to uh, to choose some parameters right yes and uh, the result uh, depends on the on the choice of these parameters yes. did you try did you try to to change parameters and maybe in this case uh, the the resulting picture will be absolutely different uh, yes, it I is... have tried to change the parameters, but uh, uh, here the thing, uh, uh, you can change the parameters and yeah. the picture will be the same. But you can change the parameters and the problem just don't uh, won't be solved. Uh, you won't reach uh, low value of your quality function. Uh, that's uh, it. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, let's thank our speaker again.